Hello my soccer universe. I've decided to slightly change the format of my Serie A review that you still will get weekly. Since I'm shooting already short videos for most of the Serie A games, I've decided to, after a short opener, catch you up with all the action with longer edits of these short videos. And then after this little summary that is similar to what I do on my weekend reviews, which you can actually watch here for this week for the other leagues, I'll give you a little bit more background on what I thought on some choice games, talk about the situation in the league table, especially in terms of expectations, and then quickly preview the fixtures of the next round. So without further ado, let's get caught up on the action of this past weekend. The early Serie A games on Saturday saw two draws. Como thought they got the first win, Cutrone put them up 2-0 early in the second half. However, Castro pulls one back and Ealing Jr. salvages a draw for Bologna in the 91st minute. And then Juventus were again held to a goalless draw, this time by Empoli, a team that also has been unbeaten for quite a while. The early exchanges in each half always belong to you, with, with the efforts by Vlaovic being thwarted by the Empoli defense. However, Empoli themselves also had some chances, never happened it ended in a almost logically nil-nil draw. It didn't do much in terms of lifting my mood after Lusk's derby loss. The game kicked off during the second half of the Linz derby, but Milan got their first win of the season. It was an emphatic one, a 4-0 over Venezia at home, and all goals came already in the first half. Theo Hernandez, after one and a half minutes, with a 1-2 with Leao, takes a shot onto goal that is deflected into goal by the goalie, goes through his legs. A little bit later, Fofana, after Pulisic assists, makes it 2-0 in the 16th. In between, Venezia had their chances and then two penalties the first one covered by Pulisic in the 25th and then four minutes later after foul on Leao and seen on VAR Abraham gets his maiden goal for Milan as well who then saw the game out when it had a goal disallowed instead Caviglia was sent off but it was an easy win in head of a tough week where they play Liverpool and then Inter let's see if the good form continues then the Serie A Sunday started with the winter salvaging, or better rescuing if not stealing a point for Genoa at home to Roma. Dovbik had given Roma the lead after a kind of a goal line scramble. Roma had more of the game, they also had the Rossi sent off. In the end it's again points dropped for the Giallo Rossi. In the wild first half in Bergamo, Fiorentina twice took the lead. However, Retegi first equalizes, then the Ketelar in the 45th minute, and just a minute later, he gets the go ahead goal that Atalanta then see through. Lukman actually had plenty of chances to increase the scoreline for Atalanta. Fiorentina did not really do too much to actually earn an equalizer. So overall, I think the Atalanta win was well deserved. Meanwhile, Torino's good start to the season came to a screeching halt in a way, frustrating nil nil draw and they were lucky because Lecce actually had more of the game with Milinkovic Savic saving the day for Torino. Well, 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 on the Napoli machine is running again. It was the Lukaku show in Cagliari. First assisting Di Lorenzo in the 18th minute and Sedeva Kvarskelia in the 66th before scoring himself after Quara assist to make it 3-0 for Napoli at their big rivals Cagliari. Late on, Buongiorno adds a fourth Napoli seat now top of the table after a horrid start in Verona. And that is thanks to a minor upset in Monza. Inter had more of the game, debuting the new third kit, creating chances with their first chance of the game in the 81st minute. Itzo crosses in and Mota heads in a go-ahead goal for Monza. However, Dumfries taps one in from short range in the 88th minute. Inter cannot find a winner. Drop points are now a point behind Napoli, but still sitting second in the table. Well, Napoli were top of the Serie A table for just a day because Udinese, despite being 2-0 down at halftime in Parma, won it 3-2 and they are now top of the table in Serie A. Kind of sensational, it has to be said. Parma's 2-0 lead, though, at the halftime was not really deserved because Udinese hit the woodwork, meanwhile, twice once from a really mad clearance from Parma. Immediately after the half, they cut the lead of Parma in half by Luca and then Tovin with two goals in the 68th and the 77th give Udinese the deserved win. Keita also had been sent off for a second yellow card on his debut for Parma just after the 2-2. And in the evening game, Lazio got their second win of the season, beating Verona 2-1. Bulidia gave Lazio an early lead, but it was swiftly equalized by Tankstead in the seventh minute already. Then Tati Castellanos re-establishes the lead for Lazio and they hang on to that one. They were largely the better team and overall deserved their win. 
Okay, just a few thoughts that I have in addition to what I said here. First off, Milan's 4 0 win, yes, was convincing, but only half an hour where you score four goals. Venezia could have scored in between. The biggest takeaway, though, is that Theo Hernandez and Rafa Leao, after all the scandal that enveloped them after the draw at Lazio, that seems to be over. Moods are lifted, the monkeys off the back still. Venezia was not a great opponent, and the upcoming week will definitely tell us how good Milan are with hosting Liverpool and then having the derby against Inter where you really need to get a result. Speaking of Inter, their draw might seem like a little blip, however Inzaghi did what Inzaghi does, changed a lot of players. There was for instance no Barella, there was no Cialanoglu in there, it was a changed squad. They still managed to get a draw at Monza, so yeah, Inter hiding their cards a little bit ahead of two big games this week away at Manchester City and then of course the derby keep going back to that big derby and also Napoli's win at Cagliari seemed very emphatic with a 4-0. How the performances in between the first two goals was yeah a little bit shaky but Conte is getting the results now after a really bad start and yes it is Lukaku being now the main focus in the attack. Ah, you had Osimen. That is the biggest disaster for Napoli this season but it's also a disaster for Osimen because now he's stuck in Turkey. And lastly, I have to talk about my other favorite team in Italy, Roma, still winless. De Rossi looked like a breath of fresh air when he came in for Mourinho and as so often he gets then the head coaching job and suddenly things go a little bit sideways. I still have hopes that this Roma side will turn it around and will actually climb up the table but three draws and no win out of the first four games is definitely not a good record at the moment. The current table seems a little bit deceiving with Udinese ahead of Napoli then Inter and Juve and yes Juve's great form to start the season has a a little bit halted with two goalless draws but if you project now based on the first four games forward we already see that Inter still very much the favorites and Juventus are in second spot Napoli and Atalanta behind Milan at the moment after a really bad start and yes the big win against Venezia should not cover up that the first three games were not good only in fifth place which is definitely too little there's also a little bit of a rumor that Slatan's involvement is not seen as well so yeah as for the upcoming games i already said it it's the milan derby that's the standout fixture of the round however there are a couple more that i would actually say are worth your time i'm definitely looking at juventus against napoli conte going with napoli back to his beloved juventus that's definitely a big one and given how the teams are on the table that might be actually a bigger clash than the milan derby however just the cloud of the milan derby outdoes everything. Then there's also Fiorentina Lazio, two teams that had so and so starts. Fiorentina also still a little bit soul searching. That much is for certain. And finally, the current league leaders Udinese are playing Roma away from home. Will Roma finally get a win? I don't think this Udinese side can actually get points off Roma as well. So that was it from me with my thoughts on Serie A for this past weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment below if you have to add anything. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!